seen a lot of talk about reparations on TikTok. It's 2021. How are we to determine who gets reparations and who doesn't? Reparations as the first step to healing? Mm -mm. The first step to healing is forgiveness. Philosophy at Columbia University, and we appreciate your attendance, and you're recognized for five minutes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Cohen, Ranking Member Johnson, and members of the committee. It's an honor to testify on a topic as important as this one. Nothing I'm about to say is meant to minimize the horror and brutality of slavery and Jim Crow. Racism is a bloody stain on this country's history, and I consider our failure to pay reparations directly to freed slaves after the Civil War to be one of the greatest injustices ever perpetrated by the U.S. government. But I worry that our desire to fix the past compromises our ability to fix the present. Think about what we're doing today. We're spending our time debating a bill that mentions slavery 25 times, but incarceration only once, in an era with no black slaves, but nearly a million black prisoners. A bill that doesn't mention homicide once, at a time when the Center for Disease Control reports homicide as the number one cause of death for young black men. I'm not saying that acknowledging history doesn't matter. It does. I'm saying there's a difference between acknowledging history and allowing history to distract us from the problems we face today. In 2008, the House of Representatives formally apologized for slavery and Jim Crow. In 2009, the Senate did the same. Black people don't need another apology. We need safer neighborhoods and better schools. We need a less punitive criminal justice system. We need affordable health care. And none of these things can be achieved through reparations for slavery. Nearly everyone close to me, nearly everyone close to me told me not to testify today. They told me that even though I've only ever voted for Democrats, I'd be perceived as a Republican and therefore hated by half the country. Others told me that by distancing myself from Republicans, I would end up angering the other half of the country. And the sad truth is that they were both right. That's how suspicious we've become of one another. That's how divided we are as a nation. If we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further, making it harder to build the political coalitions required to solve the problems facing black people today. We would insult many black Americans by putting a price on the suffering of their ancestors. And we would turn the relationship between black Americans and white Americans from a coalition into a transaction, from a union between citizens into a lawsuit between plaintiffs and defendants. What we should do is pay reparations to black Americans who actually grew up under Jim Crow and were directly harmed by second-class citizenship, people like my grandparents. But paying reparations to all descendants of slaves is a mistake. Take me, for example. I was born three decades after the end of Jim Crow into a privileged household in the suburbs. I attend an Ivy League school. Yet I'm also descended from slaves who worked on Thomas Jefferson's Monticello plantation. So reparations for slavery would allocate federal resources to me, but not to an American with the wrong ancestry, even if that person is living paycheck to paycheck and working multiple jobs to support a family. You might call that justice. I call it justice for the dead at the price of justice for the living. I understand that reparations are about what people are owed, regardless of how well they're doing. I understand that. But the people who are owed for slavery are no longer here, and we're not entitled to collect on their debts. Reparations, by definition, are only given to victims. So the moment you give me reparations, you've made me into a victim without my consent. Not just that, you've made one-third of black Americans who poll against reparations into victims without their consent. This opportunity to speak on reparation, which has been spoken about many times over my lifetime, but over the past year has become a hot topic. I asked the question why. There's been many surveys show that a large percentage of black and white teens would say racism is better today than yesterday. 
we, as, we use black power to create white guilt. My approach is biblical. How can I ask my heavenly father to forgive me if I can't forgive my brother? I never want to put anyone religion down, but my religion teach togetherness. Reparation teach separation. Slavery ended over 130 years ago. I'm back. How can a father be asked his son to spend prison time for a crime he committed? In the case we speak of, research, we're researching father back in history, a history of many are not taught or spoken about in school. America is the greatest country in the world to me. A melting pot of a lot of great races, a lot of great minds that have come together with different ideas and make America the greatest country in the earth, on earth. Have, many have died trying to get into America. No one is dying trying to get out. Reparation, where would the money come from? Does it come for all the other races except the blacks taxpayers? Who is black? What percentage of black must you be to receive reparation? Do you go to 23andMe or a DNA test to determine the percentage of blackness? Some American ancestors just came to this country 80 years ago. Their ancestor wasn't even here during slavery. Some black immigrants weren't here during slavery, nor their ancestors. Some states didn't even have slavery. We as black Americans, have always wanted what the Constitution stated, all men, black, white, and today Latino, Asian, Italian, etc., should be guaranteed the uh, alienability rights of life, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. Years later, after slavery ended, Dr. King, I have a dream speech, said, the, sign, the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was a great beacon of light, but hundreds of years later, we're still not free because of segregation and dis discrimination. Today, I call that reparation. I asked my mom, who is in her mid 80s, her thought on reparation. Her words, I do not believe in reparation. Who is the money going to go to? Has anyone thought about paying the families who lost someone in the Civil War who fought for their freedom? Your dad and I taught you, speaking of me, to provide for you and your family through a good education and hard work. If you give a man a fish, you feed him a day. You teach him to- Second, reparations is not the way to right our country's wrong. What I propose later will be more, more lasting. Third, it is impractical and a non-starter for the US, United States government to pay reparations. It is also unfair and heartless to give Black Americans the hope that this is a reality. The reality is that Black American history is not one of a hapless, hopeless race oppressed by a more powerful white race. It is instead a history of millions of middle and, and wealthy class Black Americans throughout the early 20th century achieving their American dream. We're discussing the, the, this morning the theory of reparation. It's nothing new. It's been tried over the last 100 years, resulting in the misery and death of over 100 million men, women, and children it's called redistribution, redistribution of wealth or socialism. Instead of that theory, I'd like to share the reality of a race whose history of success in America has been stolen uh, and what we can do to repair that damage. Pete, Larry, this is outrageous. It's unlawful. It's unconstitutional. It's racist. But it's not surprising it came from California. On the day of MLK's life, birthday, we're talking about a racist program to benefit individuals who happen to be black, $5 million. California was a free state. Well, who's going to pay for it? Why should they get $5 million? Because of skin color? It's insulting. It's racist. And I'll tell you right now, this state a couple of years ago tried to pass Prop 16, an old version of affirmative action. It lost, even though that meant that there were sane Democrats who knew it's unfair to benefit one group over another because of skin color. One last point. Somebody said, judge a person by the character of his conduct, not the color of his skin. And that is a person that we should be following, not giving people $5 million based on skin color. It's outrageous. But no, if you look at the, the reality of who will benefit from certain policies, when you take into account that they're not starting at, at, at the same place and they're not, stand, they're not starting on equal footing, it will directly benefit black children, black families, black homeowners because the disparities are so significant. So if we focus on the specific issues that have resulted in the greatest disparities, 
And we understand that that's part of why we're doing it. Listen, the, the reality also is this. Any policy that will benefit black people will benefit all of society. Let's be clear about that. Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country. Right? The president of the San Francisco NAACP and the pastor of the Third Baptist Church, Reverend, Reverend Amos C. Brown. Dr. Brown, thanks so much for being here. So five million dollars to every black resident. That sounds good to me. That sounds like something, uh, that sounds like a plan that everyone would like who would be a recipient of that. So why don't you like that plan? Let me correct something. The board has not agreed to a my $5 million plan. Yeah, it's a proposal. I That's get it. I, I, know, I know, I know. It's a proposal, but yeah. why don't you like the proposal? Uh, because it has become a laughing stop around this nation and representatives of it have indicated it was not based on any formula. It was not thought out logically. So that we should not be teasing and tantalizing African Americans. We are in trouble in this city. We need action now. We've had far too many studies, too many analyses, too many suggestions. And if the board were serious about that, this past Tuesday, they would have in principle supported cash payments and suggesting a plan for payment, even though as some say, we have a deficit, we can't do anything now. Well, deficits don't last the days. And even in Germany, Germans paid by install. I'm looking for, and the NACB is looking for, real action and not intentionality. We've talked too much about reparations. In fact, it was the NACB branch that introduced the idea in 2019. So we can't be like Jack and the Bear, making tracks, but getting nowhere. Even this U.S. Congress of this nation has not acted on reparations in principle. And 70% of the nation are against it. Now is the time for all fair-minded, informed, loving, just citizens to join us as African-Americans and support us as we supported reparations for the Japanese and for the Jewish community. That's the bottom line issue. We are not against cash payments, but we want sincere action and not optics. So you don't this think is this is a people. so 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 sorry to interrupt, but you don't think this is a serious proposal by the Board of Supervisors? It's not on the board what has happened. The board has not acted. It was a representative of the task force who threw out this number without any basis for it. And we're, people are entitled to their opinions. But on issues like this, you need facts and you need practicality. And that's the only thing the NACP is looking for, real action and not suggestions. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Brown, I really appreciate you clarifying all of that for us. Fuck this old nigga. All right? Well, fuck, fuck this guy, man. Fuck this guy for his opposition to a proposed plan to give every black person that's eligible $5 million, you know, in San Francisco. Okay? Fuck you, man. All right? The first thing that came to mind was... Uh, you know, my banned videos, the videos YouTube has banned, you know, and won't let back. I've tried to sneak the videos back on there where I underlined, you know, certain turncoats in our society, okay? Certain turncoats. You know, these guys are out to get the bag and shit. And, you know, like the boomers and some of the, a small smidgen of Generation Xers and shit, you know, I don't know the actual numbers, but I know the boomers, our numbers and this cooning bullshit. You know, they outnumber us with the Conan bullshit. All right? Muddy in the waters. We just don't do enough to differentiate ourselves from these uh, people that's here that be agents of chaos 
amongst us or whatnot, okay? You would not see this in the Italian community or, you know, even the Spanish community. They stand together for the most part and shit, you know? I'm not going to talk about the minority majority or the Asian community and shit, okay? They got it on lock, okay? They all speak with a unified voice and shit, but when it comes to us, you got these people out here leading you, you know, leading you into a dead end, all right? Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown should step down from his impotent organization and shit, okay? The NAACP stands for the National Advancement of Colored People. You know, maybe I'm missing an A, I don't give a fuck. What have they done in the last 40 plus years to advance black people's agenda to even keep us safe, to lobby for us on the, uh, you know, the floors of the government of this goddamn, uh, you know, this goddamn America, 3Ks and said shit, okay? What the fuck have they done? All these representatives and shit, that goes to the black caucus of bullshit, you know, what have they fucking done? We got a bunch of old farts sitting ass in chairs they don't, they don't deserve, okay? They need to step down and get out the fucking way, okay? We need young blood, you know? Back in the 60s when a lot of these motherfuckers were young and shit, they were young blood and shit, okay? They have the same fucking problem that regular politics has outside of our ethnic community and shit, okay? A lot of these old farts thought they were lifers and shit, and they feel entitled to sit in that fucking chair and do whatever the fuck they feel like doing and shit, irregardless of enforcing the will of the people that they supposedly represent. It was bullshit. And I don't care how you feel about it one way or the other and shit, okay? I have made myself quite clear on this shit. We want our fucking money, okay? And I don't care. You know, the assholes that talk against, uh, you know, reparations and shit, they're, they're not shy about their opinion. So why the fuck should I be silent about my goddamn opinion and shit, okay? And I think this motherfucker should step down. Matter of fact, I think that his chapter should be, you know, disbanded, okay? It should be null and void. I think, you know, if there's some young people there, you know, a significant number of young people, and I do mean young people and shit, we need young blood, all right? I think they should converge on that place in mass and, you know, Make them, make them get out. Okay, they should run out of town. Uh, you know, they used to tar and feather people like this, call them fucking carpet bag and shit. You know, he's not speaking for our interests. He's speaking for his own fucking interests. He's so goddamn fossilized this shit. You don't understand what the fuck is going on. When the last time you talked to your people, and I'm not talking to you about your friends. I want you to get out, and go look around. Go look around, fucking San Francisco. One of the most expensive cities, one of the most expensive cities in the country, okay? And the fact that somebody would even float that and it would, you know, make news time, you know, I guess you can see it as part of like, you know, just emotional terrorism and shit to like, you know, put that out there and then say it's not happening, you know? Just like the HR 40 bullshit trials, you know, where they marched in a bunch of their agents, their fucking ops, you know, headed by Coleman Hughes, who who's a Puerto Rican who identifies for business reasons as a black man. And this motherfucker, I don't know who he is and shit. I just know he ain't he ain't one of us. Okay? He ain't one of us. He's a fake. He's a Manchurian candidate. There's a lot of those in politics and shit. We have to stop being lethargic. Okay? We have to stop being lethargic enough to look at these people clearly as shit. Okay? I'm not telling nobody to vote. Fuck that shit. Okay? The house always wins and shit. We have to do other, you know, other things. Okay? We have to think uh, think outside the box and shit, okay? You know, I'm just being honest about this and shit. I, you know, fuck Dr. Amos C. Brown. He doesn't deserve any respect because he doesn't respect the people that he is supposed to represent, okay, across, across the colonies. All right? And he's a failure, okay? He's He's a failure, okay? The organization that he uh, he's leading that particular chapter, that is a failure. That is an impotent organization. It doesn't 
It doesn't mean anything, okay? The name of the NAACP doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean shit, okay? And I think they should they should be disbanded. It should. I think whatever legal means or extra legal means to, to get that done should be done. There needs to be checks and balances for people that speak against our interests and shit, okay? And I'm tired of this black church bullshit. Fuck the black church if, they, if they're going to be ops and shit. If you're going to be fucking ops, you don't believe in that Bible in your hand. You don't believe shit in that fucking Bible. And you should step down from your church too. Okay? You should step down from your fucking church. You're not representing, you're not leading the people. Okay? You're not leading the fucking people. You're just lining your pockets. Okay? When are we going to get tired of these people? I've been tired of them since 1986. And I was a fucking teenager in that, that year. I was like a junior in high school. But I just like, I was just like, man, a lot of these dudes is like fucked up. Okay? Even the following year, I had to run in with a certain, you know, leader over here in Chicago. One of the big two. And I was left wanting as well as a, a 15-year-old boy who was fucked up in the head from meeting this guy and having his dreams crushed and shit because the guy wasn't who he thought he was. They ain't no, you know, like Rush Limbaugh saying uh, Obama the magic Negro and shit. What did he fucking do for black people in his eight years in goddamn office? And don't you talk to me about fucking Obamacare shit. When he did a bunch of shit for everybody else but nothing for us, disparage the men and shit, disable, help even further destabilize our homes and shit. Our children wasn't safe. He didn't do shit. We had kids. That's when they started, like, with the Trayvon Martins and, you know, all the other bullshit and the psychological warfare and the double dealing and shit. I want to thank that nigga. I want to thank that fake ass, that fake president. The first black president of the United States was Frederick Douglass. Right after Lincoln got shot. Fuck this guy, okay? I'm tired of these old dudes and shit. And you, let's see who shows up to their little fish fries. It's going to be a bunch of old farts that look just like them. You ain't going to see no young people there because they're busy fucking off their, their time and shit. Their youth, they're fucking it off on TikTok and Instagram and shit. While, while they watching uh, uh, fucking Hulu and Disney Plus and looking at commercials for DoorDash, which trying to slide your ass backwards into slavery. They get it together and shit, okay? I'm Generation X, goddammit. SYSBM equals save yourself, black man.